Welcome to the Type 054 Bravo ship brief. This is the brand new Zhang Kai frigate China's building right now. So they've added a lot of new equipment to it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. This is being built by one shipyard right now. Uh, it's the Hu Dong Zhanghao shipyard in Shanghai. Uh, the weapon configuration right now is still unclear, but we have enough visual evidence to have a, a good guess at what's going on. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. So I do want to caveat today's briefing with we are recording this as it's happening. This ship was launched about four weeks ago. So she's not even commissioned yet. And they're building four of these. So we're not, uh, we haven't seen any performance at all at sea. Sea trials have not even started yet at time of this recording. Uh, so this is basically an initial briefing. And whenever she is operational, which could take a year or more, uh, we'll probably do some kind of follow up. All right. But let's talk about what we do know about the brand new Type 054 Bravo, the new version of this Zhang Kai frigate. We're going to call it Zhang Kai 3 because it's the new one. This one displaces 6,000 tons, 30% heavier than the previous one. The last one was about 4,000. This one is 6,000. A lot, much larger hull. It displaces a lot more water. Okay. And with that, she has a lot of new weapons. 32 cell VLS on the bow, capable of shooting medium range surface air missiles and anti-submarine torpedoes. She has a 24 cell SAM launcher on the rear end for point defense. And she has two quad launch anti-ship missile racks amidships. Um, probably YJ-12s, but we'll see what she actually has. Uh, we'll break down, we'll, we'll treat it as if it is a YJ-12 in this lecture. So she's heavier, longer, wider than the predecessor. All right, let's talk, start on the bow, talk about weapons here. We begin with a HPJ-26 76 millimeter gun. This one does look a little bit different. The housing's a little bit newer. So uh, this may end up being a new version of the PJ-26, but for today's purposes, 76 millimeter gun. That's all we need to know. Behind that is a 32 cell VLS on the deck for the surface air missiles or a anti-submarine torpedo. Behind that is a Sea Whiz. This is a major difference here from the previous version. They did not have this close in weapon 30 millimeter gun on the Zhang K2. They do have it on this one. This is the type 1130. Uh, the, the, the 1 1 means it has 11 barrels on it. Very rapid fire point defense weapon. Amidships, and you cannot see it because it's hidden by the uh, hull right there, but there are two quad launch rack mounts. The launchers are not even installed yet. Uh, that will house the YJ-12 missiles there. Behind that, we can see where there is a door that opens up to allow torpedoes to come out. There's one of these on the port side, one on the starboard side. Shoots a uh, 324 millimeter uh, torpedo. That's a, usually a lightweight torpedo. Could either be the YU-7 or the brand new YU-11 that will break down for you in this lecture. And then behind that on the roof of the helicopter hangar is an HQ-10 SAM. And that is a point defense, very short range uh, SAM designed to intercept incoming cruise missiles or low flying aircraft that are near the ship. All right, let's talk about sensors. Starting in the front, we have a type 349 Alpha fire control radar. That's for the 76 millimeter gun. It is completely independent of all other radars. At the very top is a new S-band ASA radar. Uh, we know it's S. We know it's an ASA. We don't know what power levels it has or any kind of data. As soon as she goes to sea and fires that thing up, we're going to know a lot more about her. But all we know right now is that it's an S-band radar. All right, it's a type 751 uh, ESM there on the sides and seven. 263 ECM. So ESM is for uh, sensing and the ECM is for countermeasures uh, for electronic warfare. Behind that on the large mast uh, center of the ship is the TACAN comms uh, VHF UHF antennas. So that's how she's going to communicate. They may end up putting a shroud over that, but that's it without the shroud. Behind that superstructure is the type 7264 Bravo decoy launchers. There's one port one starboard. These shoot combination chaff flares up into the air to mask the ship's signature. And the helicopter hangar there on the back is where she's going to house a Z-21 Foxtrot Marine helicopter. It is essentially a Chinese copy of the American Seahawk. Uh, and you'll see a picture of that here shortly. On the rear end there, you can see the door. It is currently shut for the towed array sensor, towed tow array sonar, and a variable depth sonar. So uh, VDS would be ployed out, deployed out, 
and uh, it would have little fins on it. And as they move forward through the water, the control fins can push it down and change its depth. The idea is to get the VDS below the thermal layer where it can then transmit active sonar. It does have a toad array as well, passive toad array. All right, here is the visual difference between the previous version and the current version. You can see uh, the one on the bottom is the new version. On the bow, it has that point defense gun right there. Uh, the superstructure is a little more compact and uh, has a, a little bit larger VLS there on the bow as well. Notice that they removed the RBU 6000s. Those were the depth charges. No longer needed. That's how much confidence they have in the torpedoes now. All right. Type 054 Bravo. They're building four of these in the same shipyard. I should mention that this is the first in what appears to be a competition where uh, the, the Chinese central government is uh, asking each shipyard to come up with their best version of this frigate in terms of, you know, effectiveness, firepower, ESM, and then, of course, cost and getting it, them into, into the water quickly. So the other shipyards have not built their version yet. So this is the Hudong version of this frigate. And they're going to build four. Four under construction right now. And that's where they're being built, right there in Shanghai. Okay, let's break it down by the numbers. This is the Shanghai 3 class, is what we're calling it. It's the code LAG. Uh, propulsion has two shafts. So that has the, um, the, the uh, gas turbine on it with the diesels. It has... Uh, it's 147 millimeters in length, 18 millimeters across and displaces 6,000 tons once it's fully loaded with equipment and whatnot. It has two quad launch anti-ship missiles, a 32 cell VLS on the bow with a 24 cell uh, short range SAM above the helicopter hangar, a 76 millimeter gun on the bow with a 30 millimeter Sea Whiz right behind it. It does have port and starboard torpedo tubes and a Z-20 Foxtrot ASW helicopter. As for sensors, it has the S-band ASA radar like we talked about. It has the Type 349 Alpha fire control radar above the bridge to control the 76 millimeter deck gun. It does have an electrical, optical, and infrared director. We don't know the number on it yet, the version yet, so we're still waiting on that. Uh, it does have ESM and ECM of the 751 and 726 family. Uh, it does have a navigation radar uh, not able to confirm it yet, but it's probably the same navigation radar they've been using that doesn't appear to have a big upgrade visually anyway. Uh, it does have the decoys port and starboard. I told you they shoot the combination chaff, flare, smoke um, are all available. And that's 122 millimeter uh, shells that they launch up into the air. And she does have towed sonar array with VDS capability. So quite the frigate here. This is an actual warship. Look at the number of sensors and, you know, weapons on this little 6,000 ton ship. All right, here's a type 3549, correction, 349 Alpha fire control radar developed by Zhan Navigation Technology Research Institute there in China. It's uh, independent of all other radars on board, has the sole mission of directing the 76 millimeter gun. It is an X-band frequency, high repetition rate, very accurate. You need that to control weapons. Uh, there's electrical optical sensor on this as well. Has a range of 18 kilometers and can track one target at a time, which since it's only directing one barrel, it makes sense. Does have 360 degree coverage minus the superstructure that's right behind it. Here's the decoy launcher we were talking about. Great photos of this, by the way, uh, brought to you by Tafon Osbrick, our researcher for these lectures. So this is the new variant of the 726 Mod 4 decoy launcher. It has uh, three by eight tubes for each, each launcher, 122 millimeter trainable, uh, IR flares and chaff, um, fires anti-torpedo decoys and HE mortars. And, uh, and that's, that's the new uh, upgrade to this launcher is now it can throw decoys into the water, not just, you know, smoke, flare, and chaff up into the air. Uh, very flexible loadout. They can put whatever they want in each one of these tubes. And uh, combat uh, mission uh, system is completely integrated with this. So the same system that is communicating with the radio room and getting messages and targeting from, say, other platforms, uh, including their helicopter, is also in control of the weapons and 
this uh, decoy launcher. It's all integrated, all together. So here's the HP J26 uh, 76 millimeter naval gun. The housing is a little bit different on this one. It's more stealthy. Uh, they added, you know, few, fewer um, corners to it. So it's locally produced AK-176. That's the Soviet version. It has an effective range of 15.7 kilometers and has a selectable uh, rounds per minute of up to 130. So it can fire pretty fast. Uh, we'll see how much of this thing jams whenever it gets out on sea trials. That'll be interesting to find out. They've had a history of problems with jamming these guns with the high fire rates. Uh, muzzle velocity is uh, 980 meters per second. Can shoot nearly straight up to a plus 80 degree and a negative 10 degree where it's blocked by the uh, the deck itself there. Has two types of rounds. It has fragmentation for use against ships and airburst against aircraft and incoming missiles. So you will see this gun trying to defend the ship in a missile attack. Alongside of it, or literally right behind it, is the PJ-11. This is the Type 1130C Wiz, uh, developed by the 7113th Research Institute. Has 11 barrels, shoots 10,000 rounds a minute. Does not jam as much as the uh, deck gun may. <laughs> it has a muzzle velocity of 1,150 meters per second, so it's pretty high. Again, can shoot nearly straight up and negative 25 degrees down. Uh, in the event of a UUV attack, this is the gun that's going to defend the ship right here. You would think the the gun on the on the the big gun on the deck, the 76 millimeter, would. If the UUV is detected far enough away, then yes, that would be the case. But close in, uh, surface attack UUVs, they're they're going to employ this gun to try and defend the ship. Can shoot uh, HEI frag and frag T and APF SDS rounds. Uh, the sensor is a J-band radar with electrical optical fire control system as well. You can see the little ball on the left-hand side of the turret that's next to the radar dish. That thing flips 180 degrees and has a little lens on it. It's in the stowed position right now. All right, let's talk about the YJ-12. This is a nasty anti-ship missile. It's uh, The YJ-12 Ying G means Eagle Strike. So they've literally named this to uh, go against the United States, in my opinion. Uh, the dimensions are it's eight meters long, uh, 480 millimeters in diameter, and uh, 2,200 kilograms. Can reach a peak speed of 3.3 Mach. This thing is incredibly fast. It's designed to just burn through uh, with speed alone any kind of point defense. You know, you shoot these in mass, and there's only so much time inside five kilometers that the point defense can actually target and adjust and so the idea is yeah you may get one but you're not going to get all four that that are coming at you so uh, the max range is 500 kilometers that's 290 kilometers uh if, if they have the export variant because they do sell this missile to other nations uh, the warhead is a 250 kilogram he semi-armor piercing warhead that is impact fused and time delayed they can choose one or the other. Uh, the guidance is active radar and internal navigation sensor as well. Has a solid propellant booster with a ramjet sustainer and has been in service for about 20 years now. Here's the HHQ-16, Sam. That's that medium range surface to air missile that's on the bow. Right behind the 76 millimeter gun. Has a range of 40 kilometers. Uh, can shoot up to 15,000 uh, meters in altitude has an HE fragmentation warhead. Uh, the reload time for eight cells is only 90 minutes. So you can reload this thing pretty quick, but you do have to pull in to a port to reload it. They're not reloading these things at sea yet, but like the United States, we're working on it. Let's see, uh, re reload time is 90 minutes. Uh, guidance is semi-active homing radar inertial uh, guidance and command updates. It gets mid-flight command updates towards the target. It is cold launched, which means it's just ejected with compressed air and then the motor ignites and the fire interval is two to three seconds. So it can, it can put out a lot of missiles very quickly. In the same battery, it could choose to shoot instead of the HHQ surface air missile, the YU-8 CY-5 rocket assisted ASW weapon. So this is essentially a torpedo with a parachute and a rocket motor. And um, it's, it's pretty effective. It, it, it definitely works. Uh, they, they've used these in war games for years reliably. So it's a lightweight uh, torpedo that once in the water can search out to 2.5 kilometers. It has a 45 kilogram, kilogram rather, high explosive warhead. 
and it's only 0.85 meters in diameter. Uh, the maximum range, if it runs in a straight line at medium speed, is 16.2 nautical miles and can go down to 600 meters in depth, which is deeper than most submarines can. So it's, uh, it's going to get you if it sees you. Now, here's the YU-7 lightweight torpedo. These are the torpedoes that are not vertically fired. This would be shot from the waste torpedo tubes, port and starboard. And the YU-7 is the older variant of this lightweight torpedo. It's been around since the 90s. only does about 43 knots. Modern submarines will just outrun this thing. Um, it's got a 45 kilogram high explosive warhead, has a range of 14 kilometers, but unless they drop it right on top of you, or if you're a diesel boat, you could be screwed. But any nuclear submarine is just going to crank up the reactor and get the hell out of the way if this thing uh, starts tracking them. So that's why they built the YU-11. This is the big brother, the new variant of the YU-7. It is launched from the same launchers, port and starboard, same size, but has a little bit heavier torpedo and a lot more fuel and a much stronger engine. This one uses auto fuel. Instead of being electrically driven, this one is gas driven or monopropellant driven to be more precise. Um, it has a two-speed reciprocating external combustion engine, just like our modern torpedoes here in the United States. It has a range of 30 kilometers at 23 knots, which is it just fooling around. When it gets serious, it can go up to 50 knots, but its range is Im reduced immensely to 11 kilometers. So a lot of limitations there. Uh, obviously, I can't talk about how to evade this torpedo. Just know that the only way this torpedo is going to hit a modern nuclear submarine is if it's very close. The submarine would have had to made a, a terrible mistake to get that close to a ship when it doesn't need to. And that's all I'm going to say about it. All right, let's move on to the HHQ Point Defense SAM. Uh, the shoots, or I'm sorry, it's very similar to the rolling airframe uh, 116 that we have here in the United States, but it's not a copy because ironically, this missile, when it's fired, it does not spin like a spy rolling football, like the American one does. This one just ejects it straight out and it goes after the, um, you know, whatever target. Because of that, it's not that accurate. It's not that steady, at least in their, in their initial flight, initial flight rather. It's, it just ejects the, the missile in the general direction and hopes the seeker picks up on the, uh, on the target. It does have a max range of uh, nine kilometers for subsonic targets and six kilometers for supersonic. Again, that's the advantage of that supersonic missile coming in on you because these weapons systems take time to lock onto the target before engaging. And that millisecond is three kilometers. All right, the ZF-20, correction, the Z-20F helicopter uh, is manufactured by AVIC. This is the ASW variant of the Z-20 helicopter and you can see by the picture on the right that it looks very much like the american seahawk and uh, they they've made some minor changes to it so you could say that they've put a chinese spin on it but the everything from the engine housing to the pilot to the main carriage is it's all uh american all right so this is equipped with a surface search radar and can deploy sono buoys and torpedoes has a max speed of 190 knots very similar to the American one with 160 knot cruising speed and a range of 30 nautical miles service ceiling of only 20,000 feet. This thing will come out and get you. And that ladies and gentlemen is the Yankee three. What we know about it so far, again, just commissioned correction, just launched the first one. They're building four of these uh, two at a time. So there's two in progress right now. This is a 70 year update from the original type 054. Uh, it's 2,000 tons heavier, like I said. All ships are being built in China, and uh, all four of this variant are being built by the Shanghai, in Shanghai, rather. Uh, so other shipyards will probably have their own versions of this, and when that happens, we'll update that as well. So the Type 054 Bravo frigates will feature uh, less radar cross-section and less IR signature, so they're more stealthy. Uh, propulsion is assisted by the combined diesel-electric and gas turbine ar arrangement. That's the COD lag that I talked about in the beginning. And uh, the first two were launched in August 2023, about three weeks ago. So we will uh, see where this leads us. I'm kind of excited about this. I know uh, China is a near-peer nation that we don't have good terms with, but I'm still impressed with their shipbuilding capability. I can't help but be impressed by what they're doing over there in China. Uh, they're building these ships quickly. They're putting a lot of capability into only 6,000 tons, unlike what we're doing here in the United States. Uh, we're, doing, we're building slower, um, less, 
and heavier ships. And I think China's doing it right. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll talk to you next time.